In this video, I will show you how to control your infrared devices, such as your TV, using your smartphone. So my phone is the Samsung Galaxy S6, and it has an infrared blaster built into it, just like a TV remote. And that allows me to control all the electronics in my house, from my projector to my surround sound system, even my air conditioning units. Now, I actually don't use the built-in app that Samsung makes. Uh, I use a third-party app called Anymote Smart Remote, and it's made by Color Tiger. It can be found on the Android Play Store. This is not a sponsored video, but I love this app so much. I found so many cool uses for it. Um, they have a huge database. You just open up the app and you can find whatever device it is that you want to control and you add it to your remote. And then it allows you to customize and bring in several remotes and make your own custom remotes. I want to be sure to point out that what I'm about to show you can only be done on phones with IR blasters. In a future video, I'll show you how to control your infrared devices using a phone without an IR blaster. The feature I want to demonstrate today is the ability to import your own remotes. Now, a while back I purchased uh, some home theater equipment. Now, the Anymote Smart Remote database is pretty big, but it didn't include uh, this particular brand of electronics. Now, being an electrical engineer, I thought it might be fun to take on the challenge to see if I could figure out how to control my home theater equipment using this app. After thumbing around in the app and a bit of research on Color Tiger's website, I found that they support a couple of different types of file formats. They have their own file format with the extension of .amsr, which I presume stands for Anymote Smart Remote. The AMSR file is just a plain text file that is formatted similar to JSON, this JavaScript object notation, with elements for the remote name, button name, and button codes. I figured all I had to do was capture the IR codes from my remote put them into a text file, format them in the right way, then name the file with an extension of .amsr, and then try to import them into the app. First, I knew I would need an IR receiver to capture the IR pulses from my remotes. I found the 38 kHz TSOP 4838 IR receiver on eBay in a pack of 10 for about $3.50. There are three pins, VCC, ground, and Vout. You basically supply it power on the VCC and ground pins and read the Vout pin for pulses. So the next thing I needed was a way to read those pulses coming off of that Vout pin. Now I'm lucky enough to have access to an oscilloscope and a digital logic analyzer, so naturally that's what I use to accomplish this. So I took the little IR receiver and I plugged it into the breadboard. Next I grabbed one of the probes on my logic analyzer and connected it to the Vout pin. Then I fired up the software and started collecting data. Then I grabbed my remote and I aimed it at the IR receiver and started pressing buttons one by one until I'd gone through the entire remote and collected all of the data that I needed. Once I'd collected all the data that I needed, I used the software to export it as a CSV file or comma separated value. And that way I could open it up in Excel and look at it. Then I spent the rest of the night uh, writing up a Python script that would basically import the CSV file and parse all the data and format it properly so that it would write it back out to an AMSR file that would hopefully be able to be read by the Anymote Smart Remote app. After lots of trial and error, I was finally able to get the Python script to format the AMSR file properly and I was successfully able to uh, import that as a new remote in the Anymote Android app. I was super excited when I got to this point because the next thing of course I did was I grabbed my phone and I pointed it at my speakers and I was able to turn them on, which was super cool. I was really excited. So at this point I had a proof of concept, but it was a really complicated process and it used tools that not everybody has. Uh, so I wanted to refine that process down uh, into something that the average hobbyist could do uh, with using tools that were more accessible. So my goal was to be able to recreate my success but using an Arduino or a Raspberry Pi or the combination of the two. So all of my code had been written in Python and it was running on my desktop computer. So I thought it'd be easiest to just try to run that on the Raspberry Pi. But after a lot of thought and consideration, I determined that a much more simple solution would be to start from scratch and just write the code to run on a single Arduino board. The result was an Arduino sketch that could be loaded onto any Arduino board that is capable of using the serial monitor. So the Uno or the Mega or the Nano are popular examples. So now I'll walk you through how to use the code. Uh, you'll need to upload the sketch into your Arduino and open up the serial terminal and make sure that the baud rate is set to 115,200 and the line ending is set to no line ending. The first thing the program needs is the name of the remote you want to import. 
I'm using the remote for an acoustic audio surround sound system, so I named my remote Acoustic Audio. The next thing the program will ask is the name of the first button you want to capture. I want to capture the power button, so I enter power. Next, the program waits for you to press the button so that it can record the IR pulses. Keep in mind that when you hold the button down for too long, the IR pulses continue to repeat. The program will only capture the first pulse stream as long as you press the button less than one second. In other words, press the button down normally and release normally. Don't hold the button down for too long. After one second, the pulse stream values appear on the screen. In order to import this data into the app, everything must be printed on one line. You can scroll left and right to see all of the data. The program is now waiting for you to input a second button name. I enter volume plus and I press volume plus button on the remote to capture this data. Rinse and repeat until you are done capturing all the buttons you want on the remote. When you are done capturing buttons, instead of entering a new button name, type the word exit with a set of parentheses as the button name. This tells the program that you're done entering the current remote. The program will terminate the current line with the appropriate closing brackets and braces. It enters a new line for a new remote. You may choose to just stop here. Everything you need to create the .amsr file to import into the app is now printed out for you on the serial monitor. Open up a text editor and create a new file. If you don't have a favorite text editor already installed, I like to suggest Notepad++ for Windows. Or you can just use the one built into your operating system. Once you have a new text file created, select everything on the first line of the serial monitor, copy and paste into the text editor. If you made any mistakes while entering the names for the buttons, you can edit the text file now. Keep in mind you can always edit the remote once it's imported into the app. Save the file with the extension .amsr and give it a name that you want. I just use the name of the remote because that just makes sense. So you now have the file on your computer and we need to find a way to transfer it to your phone. If your computer is equipped with Bluetooth, I find that's the easiest way to transfer it. You just navigate to the file in your file explorer, right click, send to, Bluetooth device, and then initiate the transfer on your cell phone. Alternatively, you can just connect your phone with a USB cable and drag and drop the file onto your phone. The final step is to import the AMSR file. So open up the Anymote Smart Remote app and click on the menu, then click on App Settings. Then click on Import Remote from File, and then Select File. Next, you'll browse to where you stored the AMSR file and select the appropriate file. Then click Done and then click import. And that's it, you've imported your remote. So that's the whole process. Now you can take any remote and put it onto your phone and control that device with your phone. I hope this video was helpful and let me know if you have any questions. I've written a detailed explanation of how I did all of this and I've included it in the description. Thanks for watching.